Hello and welcome! This is Roofmonger, and this is my tips and tricks guide for Gogeta and Dragon Ball Fighters. So, with as all these style of guides that I do here, the tips and tricks series, there's going to be all sorts of stuff covered here from the basics here, you know, just even this basic move set to advanced concepts and all points in between. There will be uh, timestamps in the video description if you want to skip around. And with that said, let's just start with the basics here. Let's just cover his move set. So now on to his special moves. The first one we have here is the Soul Strike. And this is what we call a Rekka series in that you choose to do the additional hits. So it has three possible hits all in all. This move also Let's is go. air okay, just so you know. And basically, Let's you just go for it and you knock him in the head. There's not too much uh, finesse to this move. Uh, you're going to use it a lot as a combo ender. Also, please note here, the final hit is a true overhead. You do actually have to block the standing. And this is uh, true no matter which version you use, be it uh, the light, the medium, or the heavy. It's always going to be that. Uh, also, to note here, the heavy version. No matter uh, what you do here. So, like, if I only hit a single button here, I only get one Rekka, right? If I hit two, I get two Rekkas. And then if I hit three times, I got three, right? The... Heavy version here, the enhanced version will always do all three hits no matter what, plus the bonus hit which will then switch sides and give you a wall bounce, so keep that in mind. Now that said, you can also do the heavy version at the end if you want, uh, and it'll still have the same ender here, but uh, it won't uh, do necessarily as much damage. Now one thing to know here also, uh, and I'll probably talk about it a little bit more later on as well, is this whole string is safe. Like, um, if we turn on our frame data here, we have a... Uh, our info on and we'll set the enemy back to block here if i do this whole string you're negative five which is safe in this game and not only are you negative five here um you're safe like you see the distance created between uh you and the enemy here after the blocks happen uh you know you can just backdash like unless they have an exceptionally long stand jab like say a broly or something um you can do whatever string it doesn't really matter like you can just go like this or something like this right which is all true block string and then you still have this bit of uh, space created, and you can just backdash out, or if you're not, you can go to the uh, reversal, which we'll talk about in a moment here. But yeah, just most specials in this game aren't safe. So I just find it very imminently interesting that no matter what you did with your block string, you have no bar, you have no assist, no nothing. You can always say, hey, okay, well, I'll make my block string safe. Just go from there. I, I find that very interesting. The next move we have to talk about is the Rising Vortex. So Rising Vortex is generally what we call the DP style move, a dragon punch like Ryu in Street Fighter, right? So these moves are generally pretty invincible. And uh, let's just talk about that for one second here. The light version is least invincible as it is only invincible to air attacks. So I'm talking stuff like a homing dash. Anything in the air is invincible to that. Uh, it also has the fastest startup of all of them. So if you're looking for, you know, just a nice sassy a hit, hey, that's the one to go to. Also, it scales the least. Uh, the medium one scales a lot more. The medium one now, a very important move. We'll talk more about that in depth later on as well. So full invincible to everything, uh, you know, strikes as well on the ground, all the kind of stuff, invincible to that. Uh, goes up high, also causes a wall bounce, uh, which is why we're going to talk about later, because uh, all the invincible reversals in this game, it gives you basically the most potential for follow-up and just anything you want, really. It's really good. Uh, and the... EX version, heavy version here. So same deal, full invincible also is a side switching move. So if you're in the corner and you're pressured and you just want out, keep in mind, hey, maybe just give it a shot, right? Because uh, not only, you know, you switch sides, you get the wall bounce, you get a nice little combo versus if you just uh, cheaped out, didn't burn the bar and did the medium version. Well, you can still get something, but it's not going to be anywhere near as strong or fancy. So there is an actual real good use in the burn that bar on the EX reversal. But yeah, overall, Invisible reversals are rare in this game. Meterless invisible reversals are rare in this game. Uh, so yeah, it's just a big feather in his cap. And he has a, one of the best ones, if potentially the best one, period. The multiplex after image. The beam. <laughs> this is a hell of a move, man. So uh, he's a beam lord, and we'll talk about the beams later. You know, all of his stock beams here. But this is the special move beam, right? So first and foremost, if the beam connects in any way, shape, or form, he's always going to do the dive kick. Even if you block, he's always going to do the dive kick, so keep it in mind. And it uh, doesn't matter what version he does it in, which we'll also talk about in a second here, always does the dive kick. Also, like I mentioned here in the Soul Strike, dive kick is safe on block. It's also negative five, so I don't know why he has all these safe special moves, but hey, there you go. I, you got to talk to them about it. But the fact that he has multiple safe special moves is a uh, quite uh, interesting thing. But anyway, so... The big thing here is, hey, the after image, right? So you choose where you want to be. So right now, if you just do the base move, you hit the button. It's quarter circle forward S. That's all it is, right? Uh, you just are on the ground. Go for it. 
Now, say if I were to hold back, I'll actually be up here. And if I were to hold up, I'll actually be up on the, the highest uh, possible of the after images. And I'll do the Galakun instead of the Kamehameha, just, you know, for the angle, right? So you get to choose what angle you're from here. And also, if you just hold the button, so you're holding the S button, you just faint it, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing. And, of course, uh, you can also choose a direction and still faint it. So you can be up in the air and still faint it, which is a big deal. And we're going to talk more about that later in the video. But, yeah, so uh, solid beam here. Good follow-up. Completely safe on block if you blocked it. Um... You, know, you lose your turn, sort of, but you can totally try to back dash or just cheap out and try to DP out of it, right? But, uh, yeah, very decent beam. Uh, does a lot of damage for a beam because, once again, it has an automatic follow-up, which, of course, you can super after and, you know, all that fun stuff, right? So, just a downright solid move. Not really much more to say than that. And finally, for our basic special moves here, it is the Punisher Drive, which is a full-screen command grab. Now, uh, you probably heard it's also unblockable, which is true because command grabs are unblockable. Technically, it's not a true unblockable because it does whiff on all the things command grabs whiff on, which is like homing dashes, jumps, all that stuff. So if you see me call it later in the video an unblockable, hey, I'm sorry about it. But uh, yeah, it's a full screen command grab. And in that, yo, it's perfectly dang serviceable. Um, one of the best things about it is it leaves you standing. Like, hey, if you want to follow up, you know, you can burn a bar to banish or you can cancel into a super, whatever, right? But if you just let it rock, you're in their face with the advantage. You are plus five on hit, meaning you are covered to your neutral state five frames ahead of the enemy, right? So that makes like, stuff like just stand jab free because it's a six frame stand jab, right? So pressure, 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 because at that point, right? Oh, hey, I know he's going to stand jab me, so I'm going to submit and just block. Well, then, hey, I'm going to dragon rush you. That kind of stuff, right? Um, it's an incredibly versatile move. Uh, if you want to pick very noisy assists like trunks, uh, where his assist eats up a lot of the screen and makes a lot of visual noise, you can hide it in that <laughs> during a block string, which makes it very good. Um, this is just really solid. Like, it's not like a very fast command grab like Broly or Goku Blue, but, you know, Bro Broly and Goku Blue can't hit you from this far away, right? Uh, if you're just bored and just want to test people and see what they're doing here, you can just check one of these bad boys out from full screen and just let it rock and go from there. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with it. Very good move. Uh, overall, man, all of the specials, really good. So for supers here, I just we will go through these pretty quickly because there's not too much to talk about. But first up here is the God Punisher, and he just tosses two energy balls and, goes, -da 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 and just blows you up, right? Uh, the minimum scaling on this, the least amount of damage you can do is 821, which is all right for a level one super. And if you choose to hold the button here, you can burn an additional bar, so let's say just like bar it off here, and you can do the Stardust Breaker and add extra damage to your super. So that will make it uh, 425 damage on the Stardust Breaker. So combined, it'll be 1,246 damage as your minimum. This is the least amount of damage you can do for burning these two bars. Having a level one follow-up, always good. Period. Like, there's no arguing, right? Uh, so just that's all to say. Now, next up here, the Big Bang Kamehameha is also your DHC super. So uh, just big old beam. And it has a lot of hits. On. It's going to get its own section, too. We're going to talk about it because this has a lot of synergy with a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, you can do it in the air as well, just so you know. Uh, the big thing here is this your DHC super, which I think I already said. I don't know. I, I ramble during these things here. But if you're just going to spend a single bar and nothing else, it does like six more points of damage than the uh, God Punisher, this guy here, right? So uh, God Punisher does 821 as its minimum damage value. The Big Bang Kamehameha does 827. So if you're only spending one bar and nothing else, just want to kill, six more points of damage, might as well go for it, unless you're just going for style points. And speaking of style points, yo, let's talk the Stardust Fall. So this is an air-only super. Can't do it on the ground, right? And this is one of the coolest-looking moves in the history of this game, right? My lordy. Like, some level threes don't look as cool as this move. Um, you're mostly doing this for style or just when you just want to end around, you know you got the kill. Um, it does the least damage of all the level three, or sorry, the level ones, that is. At 750, that's the minimum damage value for it. So if you're looking for pure damage, hey, this one isn't it. But there's a couple situations where you're going to be able to get the air version and nothing else. So at least you have it. Level 3, pretty bog standard. Certainly looks cool, right? But as far as level 3 goes, eh, it's kind of just whatever. Uh, looks really cool, and if you want to spend an additional 2 bars, so all you have to do is just hold the button, 
you'll spend an additional two bars and you'll get an additional follow up here just like say team gohan and uh his uh level three finisher right and there you go once again everything looks like a million bucks with gogeta that's the one thing you definitely gonna say everything looks cool so a level three minimum damage is uh 1790 which is about applicable for most level threes and uh, if you want to do the follow-up, the minimum damage is going to be 964. So combined, uh, if you want to spend all five bars, the least it can do is 2,754, which is 27%. So nice chunk of change, nice chunk of damage. So we just talked about the special moves. I do want to quickly mention a couple notable normals. And uh, probably the most important normally has, and the one you're going to see the most here, is jumping medium. So jumping medium here is a three-hitting move here. Gives you a lot of time to hit confirm, which is great. It's fantastic. And uh, one interesting thing about this. So there's other multi-hitting aerial moves in this game. And a lot of them, the way they work is the first hit is an overhead. So, you know, like many jumping moves are overheads, right? But the other hits are not overheads. So you don't get like, you know, overhead, overhead, overhead. Like as long as you block the first hit, you're good, right? Uh, for Gucita, that's not the case. So you can actually try to block low and get tagged by like the last hit if you want right so the second and third hits are also true overheads as you can see there I try to crouch block i get smacked on the second hit and if i try to say crouch block on the third hit i still get smacked right so they're all three separate hits or three separate overheads that all have to be blocked standing now give the game some time and people get used to it right but considering that a lot of jumping multi-hit normals don't work this way uh, it's definitely going to snag a lot of people, I think. Uh, very interesting to say the least. I like it. It's pretty cool stuff. And now also just some other notable normals here. So his uh, down light, the 2L as we call it, right? It's a low. So, you know, none of that meme stuff. No 2L, low, bad character, all that crap, right? Uh, but it is slow. But it is a slide, right? So it has some range on like some other uh, down lights. So just keep in mind, it's 11 frames um, and has some active frames. So if we do it from like max range, it'll take a little bit longer than 11 frames. Um, but if you're so inclined, I would say just go right for the down medium. So down medium has got some range, as you can see here. That That is not nothing. That's that's pretty uh, significant, right? Uh, and my dual shock battery is low, but that's fine because we're not going to edit that out. Um, but as we go forward here, you can see here, you just, if you're the kind of guy who's inclined to do the stupid like duh, duh, spark, in a real match and go for it. Gogeta is a little bit better at it than the average guy, I'll just say, because the range is pretty intense. Uh, it's fast for what it is as well. So just keep it in mind, you know, I'm not saying go for it all the time because my Lord, please don't do that, right? But it's better than you think in that regard. It is pretty cool. So let's talk the beam. So we said notable normals, but this is honestly its own section here because it's the most notable normal, and that is the beam here. Though so his beams, Kamehameha's, or the Gallic Guns, whatever one you're doing here, they're all normals. They're not special moves, they're normal moves. So they count just like stand light, right? And what does that mean if they're normals? Instead of specials, like what's the difference, right? Well, the difference is this. Since it is a normal and not a special, you can homing dash after that kind of stuff, right? You've probably seen already a bunch of combos where you use like a million beams in a combo combo after it, right? That's one of the big differences. So, so just as a stock example here, and I didn't really plan this out, but like, so you can go like a beam assist here and then just combo from full screen, right? Um, you don't got to burn the vanish. You can just rock right into it. That kind of stuff. Like that is one of the big advantages of it being a normal. Is you can just cancel right into the homing dash, right? And once again, that's why it's so important for combo structure. So just keep it in mind because it is a normal. So you can cancel into it just like any other normal. You can go right into a DP. You know, you can do whatever you want, right? Uh, say if um, you get blocked and you're way too close. Hey, we talked about how the Wrecking Series is totally safe on block. Just cancel into that. Don't just stand still and get smacked or like try to burn a bar and manage to cover yourself right like you can make it safe whenever you want just go for it and let it rock like that's one of the beautiful things about it being special cancelable it's just that dang good and also let's talk about the next section because this is where it gets a little bit greasy so we talked about the beams and how they are normal moves not specials so thus you can do everything you can with a normal uh be you know special cancelling Homing dash canceling, all that kind of fun stuff, right? Uh, so, you know, what's stopping you from just going like, oh, I'm just going to homing dash every single time, right? Well, you know, reality is what's going to stop you, right? Like, uh, if you do this here and go in, you're going to get down heavy, right? 
because there's the gap and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, you just can't do it, you know, or can you? So let's use the Gallic Gun as our example here. So we Gallic Gun here and we home and dash, whatever, we just get smacked, right? But the thing is, if you jump Gallic Gun versus the regular version, you're actually much lower to the ground than you are if you just do the grounded Gallic Gun. So if you instant air and just jump right away into it, you're very low to the ground. So what does that mean in terms of you getting down heavy? Well, my friends, it means this. You totally beat it, because remember, if you remember your Dragon Ball Fighters, right? Your down heavies aren't invincible on frame one. They're invincible very quick, but not instantly. So if I just go for this stuff raw here, I get smacked, whatever, right? But if I go in their face here and do an instant air Gallic Gun and then homing dash, even if they down heavy on the first possible frame, and because I've got the computer set up, that's exactly what they're doing, I still smack them out of it on their vulnerable frames, meaning, meaning, it's combo time. You just, like it's just that cut and dry, right? It's combo time. Now, just so you know, before we get too far ahead of ourselves here, say on the chance here, it just actually hit, right? Well, then you're gonna miss, right? So you wanna be, you don't have to be exactly in the corner, but you wanna be closer into the corner. But with this in mind here, it just lets you do something stupid, like, yo, Galaga needs up a lot of real estate, right? So you can basically just do something with the full uh, knowledge that, yeah, it's gonna get blocked, I don't care. And then just let it rock, and then that's when you can do your fun stuff, right? You'll homing dash, you'll bounce off them. At that point, you know, either call an assist or you can back dash get space if you didn't get the hit. Like, it's just a good tool to be oppressive with in the corner. The fact that the obvious tool to use to defeat a homing dash no longer works, uh, because once again here, uh, you are so close to them that they don't have enough time to get it off. I got the wrong card, there we go. Just very interesting. I, I just think it's very interesting. So give it a shot. Like I'm not gonna say this is like the be all end all thing to do, but it's a very interesting property and you'll probably get away with a lot of stuff that you probably shouldn't because it just works that way. So let's talk about his assist. I'm not gonna say it's like a top tier assist or nothing because it isn't honestly, but it is pretty dang decent. It definitely is worthwhile. And you gotta take into consideration in any team building you have, right? So here's the assist itself, right? He just rushes forward, does a kick, and always wall bounces. So one of the things about this is, you know, it has serviceable range, right? Well, it's uh, not full screen, so don't get that impression. It's not full screen, right? Uh, it travels a lot further than, you know, the usual wall bounce assist here. And you can get a lot off it. Like, there's so many setups here, and I'm just gonna show you something here, because that's why we have Lord Nappa here. Uh, just show you that it's such a good assist, you know, it plays well with Nappa, and you know, not a lot of assists play well with Nappa, but this one does. So, just an example, right? Maybe not the most optimal combo in the world, and very much thanks to Lord Hello, see ya for you. Hopefully I said that correctly. But yeah, just to give an example, right? Uh, there's a lot of utility you can get from a ranged wall bounce. So play around with the combos. I think it's a pretty sick combo as far as terms of it being like the next Yamcha or the next Super Saiyan Goku. No, it's not going to happen, right? But the pressure is all right as far as it just being a basic block assist. The combo potential potentially, hey, pretty dang high. So back on the DP kick here is Invincible Reversal. Uh, one of the things that's so handy about it is he can combo by himself after it without any vanish. Like you, like so many other characters, what you see is this. You see them do the DP and immediately they go into super or they get the hit and they vanish and do whatever combo from there, right? And that, that's not bad, right? But he can skip that thing. He can save his bar just to do a super at the end of the combo, right? And it's just really handy. So an example here, just from multiple points of the screen. So say we're in the exact opposite end here, and we're not even cheating like do the X version of the easy wall bats, right? Uh, we're gonna get a combo just from here, from the wrong end of the screen, from where it could be quote unquote useful, right? So from there, just the basic medium version here, we can then, after the hit, air dash, and then go for our light Rekka series. Get our knockdown, and then, hey, we can just super cancel. Now, admittedly, admittedly, it's a little tricky. You're going to have to practice that one. I had to practice that one, right? So it's not the easiest thing in the world, but let's say, worst case scenario, 
at the absolute bad range that where you know where things don't really start popping, then you can still at the very least get a air heavy. Then you can vanish, right? Don't vanish right away. You can always get an air heavy after that. And the closer we get to the corner, the more and more of the magic starts happening. So say we're just a little bit past mid screen, right? We can do something like this. Where we do our H because we have the range and we can get it anyway. So I'm close enough to the corner we can get a beam. And since beams are normals, we can special cancel, wrecka, 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 knock them down, super, that kind of stuff, right? Uh, so that's already pretty decent. And if we're even closer to the corner, then hey, that, that's just where the fun starts. Because then we get basically a more full style combo. Now, yes, the Rekka, or sorry, the uh, DP, the medium version, the one you're going to be using most of the time, one with the wall bounce, it does scale, right? And that's uh, the same with all meterless invincible reversals. They all scale. But still, you got a decent little combo out of it. That's fine. That's more than anyone else can get. So, hey, let it rock. So just a note on some basic block string stuff, and I've brought this up already a couple times in the video, but just in case you're using timestamps to skip ahead here, once again, on any basic block string, the uh, Light Wrecker series, or any Wrecker series, but the Light Wrecker series doesn't have a gap in it that you can like a visible reversal or you know reflect through, is totally safe on block. So if you're just going at the enemy here, doing something pretty basic here, that's all totally safe on block, right? You don't need an assist to keep you safe. You don't need to burn a bar and vanish to keep you safe. You can just let it rock by yourself. And once again, the Light Wrecker series creates some pretty decent spacing here. So you can usually backdash or just you know, reversal or whatever you want to do. Get away with murder. Uh, so by himself, block strings, it works out. If you don't get it, you don't need to like stagger and worry about like, what are they going to hit me out of. You can just say, no, nah, just let it all rock. All one true block string and just be safe afterwards. Now let's talk about some more stuff here. So on the block string note here, Gogeta's down heavy. This nice looking uppercut here is traditional anti-air. It leaves him airborne after he's done. This is the case for several characters in the game, uh, Android 16 being another example, right? And since you're airborne right before you hit the ground, you can do stuff like air dash, right? So then you can kind of incorporate, assuming the enemy is prone to crouch blocking or is a short character, you can incorporate a little bit of a mix here. So just to show you here what we're gonna do here, we're gonna have this enemy here set to just like raw level three. The second there's a gap, he's gonna raw level three, right? So let's just show you an air type block string that has a little bit of a left right mix in it. You done yet? Get up, get up. So there, that was just same side, right? We stayed on the same side, all golden. So now let's try to cross up. So as you can see there, we kind of tagged him with the cross up light. So this is just a little mix up to keep in mind while you're doing basic block strings. Now, once again, uh, he's not the only character with this kind of property, right? So this isn't a, a thing that's fully unique to Gogeta, but hey, you got to use every bit of uh, the tools in your arsenal. Also, just a quick note here. So while you're doing like whatever block string, you know, and then say you want to make it safe, use an assist, and then you want to try to do something like, you know, cross them up, right? So jump M crosses up fine. That works. Uh, but just so you know, uh, it can be wonky at times. Uh, sometimes you only get one hit, sometimes you get two hits, right? And uh, depending on where and how it hit, uh, the frame data can be weird. Sometimes you can always go into down light, sometimes it can't, right? So the most reliable thing I could say is if you're going for a cross up, just go for the medium and do right into your heavy. And yeah, that technically isn't safe, but once again, as I keep harping on, the light records are safe. So uh, if you do happen to get blocked here while doing this, just do this and make yourself safe. Easy peasy, right? Um, and since uh, the jump heavy here does have the smash property, you'll have plenty of time to hit confirm it one way or the other. Now, you don't have to do this when you go for it. Once again, I just said it's finicky. Like, sometimes you'll be able to get that down light afterwards, sometimes you can't. Um, and why well, leave it the chance, right? So, let's just talk about it real quick here fuzzies. So, Gogeta, he's tall, he gets fuzzied, but Gogeta, hey. He can fuzz the other tall people, right? And just in case you don't know what I'm talking about, fuzzies is a concept where someone blocks something and then tries to crouch block, but due to uh, mitigating a million factors here, uh, blocks on hitbox interactions, all that kind of fun stuff, when you try to crouch block, you can actually get instant overhead by a move here, and basically they know a 50-50 situ uh, situation where either you get hit by the instant overhead or you get hit by low, right? So let's just show you real quick here, and I have my inputs on just so you can see me trying to block, of 
Gogeta doing a fuzzy to a tall character. So as you see, it's really that simple. All you have to do is just do a jumping instant air dash medium, which you're going to be doing 90% of the time anyways. And from that instant air dash medium, just jump jab, cancel your jump jab into your light wreck series. And, which is completely safe on block, by the way, and I did it kind of bad there. <laughs> completely safe on block. Once again, I've said this a million times, but hey, just keep in mind, completely safe on block. And if it gets a hit, cool, super cancel, level three, whatever you want to do, right? Um, so it's safe to attempt it. Some fuzzy setups are not safe to attempt. If they get blocked, you kind of get screwed over. But this one, completely safe to attempt. And once again, too, you just kind of go for a low or if they're scared, just like trying to block all these million things, you just drag and rush them or whatever, right? But yeah, so... Suffice to say, Gogeta's a tall boy, he gets fuzzied, but he can fuzzy other tall people. So, quick note here on the auto combo, just so you know, in case you didn't know already. Uh, so the third hit here does leave you airborne, so you can air dash afterwards, and just do kind of any aerial shenanigans. It does side switch, just in case you didn't know. Also, if you're trying to build a team around, like, uh, taking advantage of this into a block stun, into, you know, an air dash and all that kind of trickiness, there is a gap between the second part of the auto combo here, the little bit of uppercut, and the third and final hit here, there is a gap that can be invincible reversal, the reflex, all the kind of stuff. So just keep in mind, but if you're looking for a quick little gimmick here, eh, it's not the worst thing in the world. You'll catch someone with it every now and then. Just keep it in mind. So earlier in the video, I said I'd come back to it, and hey, here we are. So the Big Bang Kamehameha has more hit stun than usual for a super. Even the supers that have more hit stun than usual, this one has more hit stun than those guys, right? So you can do some really fancy stuff. So I'm going to show you two supers here as an example um, that you can get a Dragon Rush after a full combo. So uh, the obvious things you'd think of are like Adult Gohan or, you know, Vegeta or something with fast supers, right? So I picked Sal and Tien. These guys don't have the fastest supers. They're, they're quick enough. But they're not the fastest, right? And I'm going to show you a full combo into double super and the snapback for both of these guys. And after all that, we get a grounded dragon rush. And we can do whatever snap back and all sense you want to do after that, right? So very powerful. And now let's just show you an example once again here with Tien. And for Tien, even though he's airborne, it gives a nice enough pop up here. We can just get an air snapback and go from there, right? So when it comes to snapback setups, you can actually use people outside the traditional, you know, old double super method of where you're going to have the fastest guy, you know, Adult Gohan, Vegito, all that kind of stuff. You can get a little crazy with it. Uh, not to say all the way crazy, right? But you can get a little inventive with it. And just in case, for whatever reason, if you weren't already aware, has so much hits done, yo, you can go right into Spirit Bomb from it. I can't do it directly on the ground. You gotta be a little bit up in the air to get it. But still, hey, there you go. Uh, if you got a Gogeta base Goku team, easy peasy spirit bomb combos all the time. No setup, no worry. So the next thing I'm gonna show you here is Super Jump installing the Multiplex After Image Beam. That's this guy right here. Uh, I know it's a lot of words here, but bear with me here. So generally speaking, if you faint the move, like, wherever you are, say, it's one of the two positions that put you in the air. Hey, you're in the air. And if you're in the air, you know, hey, I can land with the button. It's not too complex, right? Uh, but uh, what we can do to make it more complex is being able to move in the air while we're falling. And that's where the super jump install comes in. Now, if you're not aware what the process is, it's so simple. It's much more complicated than it sounds, I assure you. All you got to do here, so normally just do quarter circle forward and hit the button for your motion, right? All we need here is quarter circle forward and then hit up forward, hit the button. So you're doing it all in one smooth motion here. And that is the super jump install. So let me show you just in practice what it looks like. So here's me doing the regular feint. And here's me doing a super jump install version of the feint. As you can see, I kind of fell forward, right? 
So what we want is to put ourselves in a position where we can hit one side or hit the other side of our choosing, and they just have to guess. So here's the regular version once again, as you can see right there. And if we want to super jump install it, as you can see, we floated over, landed on the other side cross up. Now, just so you know, you have to do this in neutral. You can't do it in the middle of a block string, right? Unless you are in Sparking Blast. Since you can jump cancel everything in Sparking Blast, then it's no problem. As you can see, we can float over just there. Just fine. So what you want to do is you want to use like a combination of assists or just whatever you got, whatever resource you got. Or hey, just hope, you know, they're flummoxed and they just guess wrong, right? But yeah, it's a nice little tool here. It gives a neat little left-right stuff. Especially since this cross-up game is a little bit weak as we went over earlier in the video. It's a way to provide a nice little left-right mix-up. Uh, just because, you know, he doesn't really got too much else. Just to show it here real quick. Hey, he's got a safe jump setup for his level 3. Uh, many characters do. And hey, not too different. Pretty basic, just instant air dash afterwards. Now, one thing to note, and this is a big deal actually. After your instant air dash, slight delay on hitting the M. If you do it fast as possible timing like you do for any old character, you're actually not going to be able to hit the enemy. Uh, as his uh, jump M, while it has a lot of active frames, is not active on every single frame it would seem. Uh, so if you hit it right away, you can actually have the kicks just phase through them while they're waking up. So don't do that. Now that said, we just showed the basic here. So now let's just have a nasty old Gohan here. Try to do his invincible reversal through it here. And we got to do the correct settings here, don't we? That helps. There we go. Uh, and once again here, just be a nice little safe jump. So we manage to get our instant air dash M, and if he's invincible for whatever reason, it'll whiff, and we got plenty of time to block. Now, one thing to note that's also kind of interesting here, it doesn't leave you in the corner as level 3. There's actually a little bit of a gap. Uh, between the corner and the enemy here. So if you were so inclined and trying to be a little mix-up boy here, after your initial attack and you say you assume they're going to block or whatever, right? You can then immediately cross over on the other side. Uh, now, in this specific scenario here, if they block, there'll be a little bit of pushback, so that pushback will put them and you can smack them with the uh, crossover M. But yeah, just interesting. A lot of, you know, normally it's like a mix-up heavy character, like, you know, an Android 18 or whatever, that gives the left-right option. Now, conversely, you can also just... Uh, Go for broke, like, I mean, like, right after your uh, level 3 in the corner. Just run forward and go for the cross-up right away. Uh, but there's no real mix to that, as far as I can see. As you see, you can just go for that right there, right? Uh, but still, it's interesting. I guess you can just run forward and just hit buttons as well. Uh, but it's interesting. So you have a lot of options. Uh, more potential mix-up options for uh, level 3 than a lot of characters get. And I find it honestly very odd that Gogeta himself gets this. But hey, you get the usual stuff here. Save jump, all that stuff. Pressure, that's great. And if you are so inclined, a little bit of left-right fun shenanigans as well. So as for a general game plan and just, you know, where does he belong on the team, right? Uh, Gogeta is not a very complex character. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but his game plan is really straightforward as far as I'm concerned, right? Uh, especially considering we're coming off uh, Janemba, who's one of the most complex characters in the history of the game. Uh, Gogeta, pretty straightforward. Um, a lot of judicious use of just, you know, going in, jump M. Once again, jump M is one of the best instant air dash normals in the game. The range is good. You know, it's not like, say, cooler or something, right? But cooler is not a triple overhead. And uh, Gogeta is, so that's really good. Uh, his screen control, once again, just thanks to all the beam power he has. It's fantastic. The fact that he has multiple beams. He can be on you, once again, whenever he wants, because it's literally as simple as I can make you block one of my beams here, if I can find the correct buttons here. Make you block one of my beams. Call the assist here, although it's probably for the assist to be close. And, you know, I timed it wrong, but you get the idea. Just pressure, 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 go, 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 Gogeta, right? And uh, as far as where he belongs on the team, I do strongly believe he's best service point, like many characters. Not to say he's bad mid, because once again, his assist, as we went over, is pretty interesting. Um, it's not one of the best assists in the game, but, you know, good block stun. Uh, the wall bounce is very interesting, to say the least. Uh, as an anchor, I don't know, I guess there's worse choices. Um, but, you know, like, and this is one of the issues with the game, as it always stood, is, you know, as an anchor, you always want the really good assist, right? 
and his assist isn't really good, so why have him as an anchor over, you know, Super Saiyan, Goku, or Yamcha, or something like that, right? Uh, so I do uh, believe he's best served at this point, and also he benefits a lot from just, you know, a lot of assist pressure, a lot of noise. Uh, and you can do a lot of greasy stuff like, you know, base Goku assist, right? Uh, if I do whatever block string, and I know you're blocking, I want to go right in for my command grab, right? I can call base Goku assist right away. And basically, if you tried to homing dash it, tried to vanish or whatever, it basically comes a no-win situation when you have a perfectly timed of you're either going to eat the uh, base Goku assist or you're going to eat the command grab, and there's no real way out of it short of just doing something invincible, right? And once again, it benefits a lot from assists that have a lot of visual noise, so like a Trunks, Nappa, stuff like that, that can really hide, uh, you know, for lack of a more uh, eloquent term, the graphic of it. Uh, it's, it's just a really good move. You want to... I don't want to say go crazy on abusing it, but you, in my testing, you can get away with a lot of murder with this move here, especially because of the absurd range and just, it's not flashy flashy. Like he stands still, but he's not going for a giant tell. So once again here, uh, either you have just a, you know, a death setup here with like the base Goku assist, uh, where it catches all sides if they try to move and just you know, not take the move. Uh, also, if you have uh, one of the androids, 18 or uh, 17, the barrier, if they do anything other than just, you know, jump, <laughs> you're going to get them, right? They try to hit a button, they try to vanish, to whatever. Any kind of attack the barrier will beat, and then you just smack them. And if they're airborne as well, 17, the barrier will beat them, and you'll give them the little toot finisher. So, I don't know. And there's a lot of synergy with the command grab and just various assists. And once again, outside of that, you don't got to go too crazy. Just like a lot of the stock point boiler stuff. Any assist you can do for block stun, whatever. He barely, he, he doesn't need assist for combos, basically. Unless you're just going for, like, raw damage in the quarter to build bar and then, like, you know, finish the dude off, right? Um, he doesn't need it. His combo game plan is very complete by itself. He can hit the maximum of hit stun decay by himself with effectively no issue at all. Uh, so he doesn't need it for combos other than just raw damage in the corner. So feel free to use him for pressure, 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 which is basically the best way to use this anyways in this game. And just go from there. Um, yeah, uh, the biggest thing I could knock him for, other than the fact he's tall so he gets fuzzied, is his down light, while it is a low, is on the slower end. Uh, so it's not going to be quite as tricky as some of the more traditional down hitting 2L. But still, I don't know, it's hard to put into words here because he's not a tricky character there's not a specific gimmick you want to go for other than just a couple of the odd ones i mentioned earlier in the video you want to play solid with him you want to play fundamentals and just go for it uh not much more to say than that i guess once again just an incredibly straightforward character and straightforward doesn't mean bad in any way shape or form i think other than the fact that he's tall and he gets fuzzy uh, he's definitely a downright decent character and i'm too early for tier lists and all that kind of stuff right but i gotta say uh i would put him hot take higher tier than not at least in this early juncture but yeah um just play him solid just play him straightforward use your screen control can't go wrong so i guess that is the conclusion of this video so once again gogeta he's pretty straightforward um he's not crazy or tricky or anything like that like you know janemba very crazy tricky character gt goku while he's a little caveman right he still got a lot of greasy stuff as well and Janemba, or sorry uh gogeta as of the time anyways i find he's pretty straightforward you know not to say he doesn't have dirt because you know like you know we got like the super jump install stuff and there's so many ways to hide and grease up uh the command grab and just make it so like it's a no-win situation for the enemy which is really cool but in the end he's pretty straightforward and the way you're gonna win with gogeta is just Play solid fundamentals. He's a character that will reward fundamentals because, you know, hey, his damage is good. Uh, his screen carry is good. He's got a lot of strong pressure. Um, as we went over to in the, the Super uh, Series here, Big Bang Kamehameha lets you do some greasy stuff. It's almost half the cast gets snapbacks after it. Uh, so, yeah, like it's good stuff, but it's straightforward stuff. So, if you like straightforward, man, hey, Gogeta is going to be your guy. Anyways, that's it for me, and that's it for this video. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video found you well. Go out and play some Dragon Ball.